Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting tech video. So this is the continuation from part 2 and this is the part 3 of the ServiceNow CAD exam preparation. So I'm here with another 10 question and to explain questions and answers showing you in the PDI all this stuff. So let's get into it. Uh, just a quick reminder, after this uh, there will be part 4, part 5, part 6, part 7 which would contain 15 questions on each part and that would be available for the members. So if you are not a member of my channel yet uh, but if you want to access all the questions for your CAD exam then join my channel to get access to all the parts. Okay, so let's get into it. Question number 1. Which one of the following is not an example of an application might use a schedule script execution or the schedule job? So again, not an example of. So let's see the option and let's understand if the option is uh, applicable for the schedule job. The application needs to send weekly email reminders and requesters uh, to requesters for all records on the table. Again, we do this, we use uh, schedule job for this kind of work. So option B, uh, the application needs to run to clean up script uh, on a last day of every month. Again, sounds true, uh, schedule job. The application needs to query the database every day to look for unassigned records. Again, another use of it. Then the last option, the application needs to run a client side script at the same time every day. Now, that's something is not correct because schedule job runs in the server side. So there is no connection with the client side. So this would be the right option, not an example of application might use a schedule job. So option D. All right. So let's go to the question number two. In an email notification, which one of the following is not true for the wait field? Wait field. What is that wait field? Let's go into it. So I'll make sure that each and every question is clear to you. Okay. That's my job. So I'll go to notifications again. Uh, the list view of the notifications. And here, if you go down, there is a field called wait. And if I just hover over it, used to decide which notification takes precedence when more than one qualifies. So if you are creating two notifications or three notification where the when to send condition is same, right? Then which, uh, which one would trigger first? That would depend. That would be decided from this wait field. Okay. So that's the purpose of the wait field. Now get back to the question. Only notifications with the highest weight for the same record and recipients are sent. Remember, we have to find the not true thing. Okay. Not the one which is correct. A weight values of zero means that no email should be sent. The weight value defaults to zero. A weight value of zero means notification is always sent when the notifications went to send criteria is met. Option D is correct. So if it is zero, by default it is zero. Zero means that notification will be sent when the notifications went to send criteria is met. So option B, which is said a weight value of zero means no email should be sent, that is incorrect. If in the weight section, if you use minus one, if you mention minus one, then in that case, for that weight, notification won't send. Okay, so here option B would be the option would be the answer for uh, which is not true for the weight field. All right. I hope it's clear guys. It's, it was a tricky one. So there are more tricky and use case questions are available uh, on the I would say part six and seven. Right. So make sure uh, you join the channel to access those questions. Question number three, which of the following is a good practice for adding instruction to a form? Annotations, related links to wiki pages, a context menu, UI action. A populated read only field. Come on, you know this answer. So then also I'm showing you. So most of the time we use this in the catalog item actually. So I'm going to show you with the help of the catalog items. So if I go to maintain items to see list of the catalog items. So let's open iPhone 13. So in the catalog form, for an example, if I open that, you see this annotation section is there where you can provide instruction and help test, right? So the right answer should be annotations. So let's get into the question number four. Which one of the following is true for the client user or the G underscore user method? You know that the client method can be used in the client script and UI policy can be used in the business rule only can be used in the client script UI policy and UI actions can be used in business rule and script include. First of all, you know that G underscore user glide user is a client side method. So it cannot be used in the business rule. So option B is eliminated. Option D can be used in business rule and script include again, not for server side. So either would be client script and UI policy, which is right, or 
client script UI policy and UI action. Now for the UI action, you know that UI action can be used both in the server and client side, right? So that means we can use the underscore user in the UI action when we are doing client side. Again, how to do UI action and configure UI actions I have discussed already in my service now development playlist with different use case. So make sure uh, to have a look on that. Okay, so the right answer would be C. So let's go to the question number five. Which service now utility provides a modern interactive graphical interface to visualize configuration items and their relationships? Class map, flow design, dependency view, business service map. So let's see that. Let's open uh, any configuration item. So I'll just search for configuration and I will go to the maybe application server Tomcat. Okay, it's nothing is there. Let's not choose that. Uh, let's go to the Windows server and open any server. Now to see this server is dependent on which other things. So I can click on the show dependency view and it shows the correct thing. So you can see the questions are from vast, vastly from different sections of the service now. So you have to have a good knowledge to answer these questions. So this is the dependency view. So the right answer would be dependency view. All right. So let's go to the question number six. The customer has asked that you change the default layout of the task list. They would like these columns in this order, number, task type, parent, short description, assignment group, assignment updated. After navigating to the list, where would you click to meet this requirement? Right click list gear, configure columns, checklist, context menu, configure columns, right click on the column header, context menu, configure list layout or the click list context menu personalize list. So definitely we are not personalizing anything. So the right answer would be configuring the list layout option C. Okay. So let's go and jump into the question number seven. What is the purpose of the application picker? Select an application to run, select an application as a favorite in the application navigator, choose an application to edit and set the application scope, choose an application to download and install. Let's go and see it. So, this is the application picker, right? We can choose different application from here. Basically, actually this icon is known as the application picker, right? So, and then we can choose different scope here and we can edit that uh, particular application and all the updates stored in the update set, right? So we got our answer. It should be choose an application to edit and set the application scope. Okay. Let's move to the question number eight. Which testing framework is used to test service now applications? ATF for automation test framework, Selenium, test driven framework and Junit. Again, this ATF, uh, I have not uploaded any video on ATF in my development series, but very soon I'm going to upload it and clear your understanding regarding the ATF. It's a very important one, uh, but in the CAD, we don't have that much of uh, knowledge we need to do, but the understanding of ATF is required. I'm going to post it in this month only in my development series. So don't worry on that. And the correct answer would be, of course, ATF. So let's go to the question number nine. Which one of the following client side script apply to record producers? Catalog client script and catalog UI policies, UI script and UI actions, UI scripts and record producer script or client script and UI policy. So let's see that. So I'll go to record producer. Uh, let's open any record producer. Doesn't matter. We need to see what are the client things are there. So scroll down, we have the catalog UI policies and catalog client script. Okay. So that would be the right answer. We have the catalog client script and catalog UI policy. All right. So let's get into the last question of this part three. When selecting the target table for an import, which tables can you select? Tables outside of service now, related tables using dot work, tables which allow write access to other applications, table within the global scope, tables within the existing application scope. So if I see the last one table within the existing application scope, that is correct, right? So if you are choosing the target table, right? So the table has to be into the existing application scope or tables within the global scope. That is also true. Tables which allow write access to other applications. So if you want to uh, import record in that particular table, you need to have the right access to the application. So I think this tree would be a right answer to be outside of service now, of course not or related tables using dot work that doesn't make sense. So last three would be the right answer. So this is it guys. This is part three ended 
so we have covered 30 questions which is available for all of you now the next uh, 60 questions which will be divided in part 4 part 5 part 6 and part 7 would be only for the members if you want to access total 90 questions you can join my channel also upcoming future questions for the cat series will be uploaded uh, for the members so join my channel to get access over total 90 questions again part 6 and part 7 is very very important guys where i've talked about more about scenario best uh, stuff which is very important for the exam okay so see you all in the member section for the part 4 bye bye take care